Hey, what's up, Scott Balkin? here with Imagination Creation Films, and today, well, we are talking about these. These are the Falcon Eyes F7 Mini RGBWW rechargeable magnetic puck lights, and you might like them. So let's dive right on into the Falcon Eyes F7 Mini review. So Falcon Eyes reached out and said, hey, we've got a very serious competitor to the Aperture MCs and we'd like to send you a couple. I said, okay, I'll give them a shot. Uh, as always, I'm free to say whatever I want. They are not paying me. They have no say so in my review whatsoever. Just a little bit of house cleaning right up front. So first glance on these, they are very similar to the Aperture MC, but there are some differences. And we're gonna go through those as we kind of unpack these and what they are, what they can do. Um, but first off, let's talk about what you get. When you get them, you get them in a box, you get a case, you get a little mount for the top of your camera. You get a silicone soft diffusion cover. You also get a grid cover. There are magnets on the back. They are rechargeable, it's USB-C. It does come with a recharging cable, but not a charger. Um, they have a little on-screen display as well. And they have very similar feature set to the Aperture MCs. And, you know, we're gonna be comparing them to the Aperture MC because quite frankly, the Aperture MC has been out there for a long time and has really set their feet on the, on the ground as a solid uh, option out there. So we're gonna compare this to them as much as we can, but this is a review of the F7 Mini, not the Apertures. So the first thing we should compare is size. So this is the MC here, and this is the F7 Mini. If you look, you can see that, well, they're fairly close. The MC is a little thicker, uh, the, the F7 Mini is a little thinner, but you can see that the F7 Mini is a little taller. And it's hard to see with the light on, so we'll turn that off. But you can see it's a little taller. If you put them side by side, you can see it that way. The other thing we notice here, if we pop off these little covers, is the aperture is quite a bit smaller than the F7 Mini. And well, it, it comes with the way that they're built. The aperture is more aluminum on the outside with some plastic, and the F7 Mini is almost entirely plastic everywhere with the exception of the magnets. And inside there is some metal. Um, but as far as durability wise, um, I mean, these are more affordable than the MCs. And you can kind of tell. Um, the, the plastic housing on the outside is, is not quite as up to the standards of the MC, but will it fail? I don't think so. Uh, I've been using them around here a little bit here and there, and I've not had any problems with them. Uh, they, they feel cheaper. Um, they, they look a little cheaper. But in the end, all we care about is do they work? Do they do what they're supposed to do? And, uh, you know, is it worth buying some? So let's just go ahead and set the aperture off to the side because, like I said, this is a review on the F7 Mini. So on here, you have the same type of controls. You could hold down the power button and it turns it on. And then on the top, you can click in for your color temperature and then your percentage of brightness. So if we wanna go up in brightness, we can go all the way up to 100%. Interesting note, if you plug it into USB-C, it immediately cuts your power to 70%. Don't know why. I'm guessing it needs enough power to charge it without overheating. We're just gonna keep it down at 1% just so we can demo. And then click it again, and then we get color temperature. Color temperature goes all the way up to 9,000, which you can see right here. And it goes all the way down to 2,500, which you can see here. And we'll get into the photometrics of it a little bit later. Um, I find that they're a little green, but we'll, we'll get into that a little bit later. So, also on here, they have, if you click the buttons, you have your effects. You have uh, various effects from police car, ambulance, um, t television, uh, a lot of different ones out there, the, the strobe, that kind of stuff. Click it again, and we get to our HSI, which you can then control that way. There's also RGB values, and there's also filters for Lee and Roscoe. 
Um, this also has a Bluetooth function, so you can connect it to your phone and have similar functions to the Aperture, but honestly, the, the Sidus Link app is miles above in capabilities, but the basic and core functions that you can find here are on their app as well. So let's talk about light output here for a minute. I'm gonna go ahead and turn these up to 100% brightness. And I'm going to put them in their silicone case. Which the silicone case will bring down the brightness level. Let's just crank this one up. And now we're going to go in and turn off all the lights. And now all the lights are off. So I want to show what these lights can do. So here we are standing side to side. You can see these are approximately two feet from my head. And I want to demonstrate by turning them off axis how quickly the grid does its job, which it's supposed to do. But I want you to see the output of them. We're looking here at the camera. And if I turn them both, you can see the grid disappears quite quickly. Let's be a fair test here. Let's uh, put this down for a second and kind of focus on how much the grid affects the light output. And then you can take the grid off if you'd like. It's just a silicone. And here is the F7 Mini with the soft diffusion. Now let's do some colors and we're just gonna use the app for that. So I'm gonna place this right here so you can see the, I'm gonna place it right here. And I'm gonna place this one right here. So you can see the effect that it has as far as color. So here is about as blue as you can get. Here is about as red as you can get. Here is about as green as you can get. And let's just go over here and add some contrast over here. Here's a blue. And that is bright blue. And it's, uh, it's not very, very dark blue. As, as you've seen over the years, I really, I test lights based upon their ability to do green and blue. And the blue here is not excessively dark blue. Uh, I do love a good blue. Uh, the green is, it's a nice green. Um, it's not excessively green either. And I do like an excessive green. Um, so it does have those features. You can link the lights together. Let's just go to there and let's set up a scene. We'll put that here. And now go to scene. And we'll do candle. And... You can see they work together when they're grouped. Now you can go individually and set them up or you can just use them as a group. Here's high and low beam. Here's police car. Fire truck. Ambulance. Red flash. Green flash, blue flash, party, party two, and RGB strobe. They also have lightning. They have lightning two, and there are some adjustments that you can do to them. This is your television. It's okay. And then you have a breathing that you can do. That's what they can do. Now, the photometrics of them, these are a little bit brighter than the MCs, but it comes at a cost of a little bit of green that comes in there. Uh, as you can see, the uh, CRI is actually fairly high. The, the TLCI was, again, fairly high. So it, it's a nice output. They could do quite a bit, and the price is... Well, it's not half, but it's a little over half of the price of 
the MC. So they are a valuable alternative to consider. Now, let's go through some pros and cons. So the pros are they're budget friendly. Uh, another pro is they come with this egg crate and the MCs do not. And this egg crate is actually one of the most valuable parts of this uh, light because I love egg crates, especially when doing little shafts of light. This allows the shaft of light to appear without it appearing on camera. Uh, big, big win there. That is really nice. Comes with a nice carrying case. Uh, that's, that's really nice. It's well packaged. It's well thought out. Um, negatives. Well, let's, let's go through them. So it is very cheaply made. It's, it's plastic. Uh, is it durable? I think it will be. I, I think it'll be okay. Uh, are you going to find them on grip trucks? No, probably not. Um, the quarter 20 in the bottom is just welded in into the plastic. Uh, I'm not sure how that is going to hold up over time. It hasn't given me a problem yet, but it's a consideration. The other thing is the magnets on the back. They're considerably stronger than the MCs with one problem. They're not stuck. They're not fused to the light themselves. They're magnetically stuck on. That was an interesting point that I found out when I stuck it onto the side of metal and I thought, wow, these are really strong, but they came off really easily. Well, and then I looked at the back and well, the magnets were stuck on. I'll give you an example. Let me take off the grid here, turn this off, and we'll just stick the magnets together. Really, really strong. But one of them does not have magnets and now the other one has two sets of magnets. So not, not a huge fan of that. I don't know if they were supposed to be glued on or not. My guess is they're not. They should be, uh, quite honestly. I don't know why a little dollop of glue on either wouldn't cost them a penny, but I mean, that's durability. Because when you pull these off of something magnetic, you should not be able to pull it off of your light first. Yeah. So there are some pros and cons, and quite frankly, it's a budget-friendly light. So it's, it's fair to weigh those pros and cons appropriately, knowing that you're not going to be paying the price of the Aperture MC. Now, the Aperture MC, the price of them, I consider them to be a good value. They are a fantastic light, uh, and I love them. These are more affordable. That means that in a lot of scenarios and for a lot of people's budgets, these might just be the perfect light for you. And with the little diffuser, well, that's kind of a big win for these. Yeah, I mean, I use them. Um, I don't always grab them, but I have used them at, at many times. Um, I, I think they're a reasonable alternative to the Aperture MC if you keep those, those pros and cons in mind. I mean, ultimately, the decision is up to you. Uh, these are readily available, quite affordable. There's a link down below. You can buy them from Amazon directly. It's through them. Um, and I mean, they've been pretty responsive, uh, really nice people. Um, so it's, it's a budget-friendly version of the MC. And if you have a tight budget or you just don't want to spend a lot of money, it's definitely worth you looking into them. So what do you think of the F7 Minis? Do you like them? Are you going to get a set? Do you think, well, you know, maybe maybe someday? Let me know in the comments down below. What, what do you think about those MCs? And remember to give us a thumbs up and subscribe. And remember, you can support me in any of the various ways down below with links. They're all affiliate links. Or you could just tip or you can become a member of the channel now. We do have memberships, which give you some cool behind the scenes stuff. Um, you can also, there's a tip jar. You, you could do all kinds of things down there to support this channel. And I appreciate that. And always, as I like to leave it, don't let your passions center around your life. Let your life center around your passions.